Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Let's Play Murder on the Mississippi, The Adventures of Sir Charles Foxworth. Trademark. This is good. This is your friendly neighborhood Let's Play Spider-Man, and this is gonna be a, a not very long, but it's gonna be very detailed and very, very, very text-heavy adventure from me to you. Um. This is uh, an old game. This is a uh, game. Well, they're all old games. So let me rewind that. <laughs> this is a game that I tried many times in my youth to play through, but I just couldn't figure out what to do, where to go, how to do it. There's some credits. Ed Bogus doing the music. Yay! He also did the music for Law of the West that I've already played, which is a lot of fun. Activision. Another one. Um, as I was saying, yeah, I couldn't figure out how to play this game through, but I've figured it out because thanks to the internet and all the walkthroughs now nowadays, people can play through games. So I've done so, and uh, this game is very interesting, and uh, I like it a lot. I used to like it a lot, and I still like it a lot, and. Uh, I decided that I would go for it, because, hey, who doesn't like adventure games? If you don't, well, well, bleh, or something. So, um, as you can see, we're on a, this whole place takes on a riverboat from, uh, on the Mississippi. It go is uh, it's, uh, going for New Orleans, I think it was, and, um, Will be taking uh, the role of Sir Charles Foxworth, a quote on quote unquote uh, famous uh, uh, detective or something like that, kind of like Sherlock Holmes, but not. You'll see the humor in this game is very odd, very silly, and it works. You'll see. I'll try my best to give all the characters different voices, just like I've done with Monkey Island. And uh, I do apologize if I offend people with my horrible stereotypical accents, because uh, many of the people in this game have stereotypical, ac stereotypical accents. You will see when they appear to the screen. I can play this game through in about 30 minutes. It's a very short game. It can be a very short game. But uh, I don't like doing speedruns. Because you will miss a lot in the game if you speed it through. There, Like I said, there's a lot of text in the game. And a lot of things that you don't really need. But it's very... I'm gonna play it through talking to a lot of the characters, uh, just uh, lots of text reading and everything. We'll just see how it goes. I mean, I'm rambling. Let's get on with the game, right? Right. And we're gonna just start from the beginning. Aboard the stern wheeler SS Delta Princess, New Orleans bound 12 hours out of St. Louis. Sir Charles Foxworth, well-known sleuth. Along with his manservant Regis, travels, first class naturally, on a simple voyage of discovery down the vast waters of the Mississippi River. It is a balmy June day. A warm breeze snaps the flags on the superstructures. The engine thumps reassuringly, only small with the snug, though isolated world of the riverboat. Who would suspect anything so terrible as murder? such a lovely day. Little could Sir Charles suspect, arriving at his cabin, that all too soon his talents for keen observation, clear-sighted reasoning and uncanny deduction would be pressed to their limits by the terrible events aboard the riverboat this fateful day. I say, Regis, what day is this anyway? 
Why, your lordship, I believe it must be Wednesday. That means then that our next stop must be some place called Memphis, is that right? Yes, your lordship, I believe that must be correct. Well then, Regis, we have three days until New Orleans. Astounding, your lordship. A truly pretty deduction. Really, Regis, it was nothing. Yes, your lordship. So, let's take a stroll on the deck and meet the other passengers, shall we? Yes, your lordship. Let's. So yay! This is Foxworth and his manservant Regis. Regis, Regis. Over here, you can, uh, when you push the button, you can... Uh, you can examine evidence. Your lordship, we haven't found anything yet. So you can inspect. I don't know what we're looking for, my lord. Now later on, when you have evidence and everything, you can come, come back to this uh, bed trunk and put evidence inside and examine them. But for now, we don't ha we don't know what's happened or if anything has happened. So let's just stroll around. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. First thing that you really want to do to know where people are, uh, who they are. Are we going upstairs, my lord? Yes, we are. Of course, you need to know who the people are on board, where they are, and also maybe find some other things about them. I've actually written down on a note where what cabins they are in and everything, but first. I'll knock over the door to the wheelhouse, my lord. Thank you, Regis. Uh, good day. It is certainly a pleasure to make your acquaintance. My name is Sir Charles Foxworth, and this is my man, Regis. I'm Willard Overbride, captain of the Delta Princess. This save is in my way. So, let's, uh... talk to Overbride. Tell me I'm a... I, ar I hardly know you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um... Uh, Previous menu. Walk around. Inspect. I don't know what we're looking for, my lord. Yeah, as you can see, the game doesn't let you do anything until you found the body. And how do you find the body? Well, the game doesn't really tell you anything, right? Are we going down the stairs, my lord? Yes, we are. That's the last time I'm gonna say that. I'm not gonna say every time they go down the stairs and everything. It's just stupid. But anyway, um, what's I say? Yeah, it doesn't give you any indication on uh, where to go, what to do. But I'll show you right away where you can find the body. It's right here, cabin number four. You'll find the corpse. <laughs> Regis, look at that. Yes, my lord. Someone is sleeping. Yes, he's sleeping on the floor, Regis. What a curious thing to do. Why, my lord? Perhaps he isn't just sleeping. Uh, what are you suggesting, Regis? A mishap? Well, there is that blood pool of blood, my lord. Yes, there is that pool of blood, Regis. Perhaps he's dead. Perhaps he was murdered, my lord. Perhaps. Nevertheless, something is quite wrong here. We must find out who, did, who this is, Regis. My lord, be careful not to step on the dead body. So yeah, we have a dead body, right here, in a pool of blood. And as you can see, the humor in this game is really silly, <laughs> but it works. So now that we have found the body, how do we get to find out who he is? Well, I was already there how to find out, but you have to find the body first before you can talk to anybody about it. So the best way to find out is talk to the captain. Like I said, this is a uh, this game is not very very difficult, I'd say, but uh, it can be. Welcome, Sir Charles. You're welcome, my you're Welcome up here anytime. Dunk. Please follow me. All right, Mister Foxford. After you. Yep. Yeah. There we go. You can get everybody. Anybody, all the passengers that you can talk to, you can get them to follow you if you want, if you need. But uh, we only need to do take the captain with us right now. And so that we can find out who the dead 
is. Pretty much. So let's go in. <laughs> Captain Overbright, what can you tell me about the victim? Oh lord, that's really Cartwright the third. What could have happened to him? It seems our work never stops, Regis. Now that we know who it is, my lord, perhaps we should find out who did it. How long do you think we have? I'm afraid that if we don't figure out who murdered Mr. Cartwright by the time we reach New Orleans, they might get away scot free. Good luck, Mr. Foxford. We'll sure need your help. My lord, be careful not to step on the dead body. So let's talk to the captain a little bit more. Uh, tell me about the victim. This is the first of my ship. Riley was a partner in the Freedom Water Steamship Line. It's terrible what happened to him. Still, he was uh, an arrogant man and a bit impetuous. Quite shocking. <laughs> Would you like the notebook, my lord? Now, this is a uh, this is the aspect of the game. You can take out your notebook and write something important down. So, like, uh, on, from all the text, I can put that he was like a, a partner in Freedom Waters. I don't think I can get this. No. Mm, I'll steam ship. Nope. A partner in Freedom Steamship. Freedom Water Steamship. A partner. You can take only a certain amount of words, but what do you think is important, you should write it down. So I'll write this down, just for kicks. Because you can compare the notes with the other passengers later on. And tell me about this person. Tell me about uh, Captain Overbite. Overbite. Tell me about uh, yourself. Running a riverboat like this one is no easy matter, young man. I sleep in a wheelhouse, sometimes I even eat in a wheelhouse. It takes a hard worker like myself to run a ship like this. Would you like the notebook, my lord? Nope. Mm, previous. Walk around. Now, this is also important to do. You walk one of these cabins. Regis, this door won't budge. Perhaps it's, l perhaps it's locked, my lord. Henry has the key. Henry has the keys. I'll tell him to unlock the doors for you. Uh, thank you. Goodbye. So now that we know that we can get these doors open if we ask Henry. And who is Henry? Henry works on the steamboat. He's a... Uh, well, he's a handyman, you could say. Like the caretaker, janitor, whichever you want to say it. It still fits. So, we're, yeah, I'm going back up because I'm going to look at the manifest. The manifest will tell me all the passenger about the passengers who are on here. <laughs> ah, good to see you up here again, Sir Charles. Lovely to land under the river despite our problems, eh? Take a look at the wall over there for the passenger manifest. You can see which cabin everyone is assigned to. Thank you, Captain. That was exactly what I was going to do here. Captain Overbite, would you mind if we looked around your cabin? No, go right ahead, Mr. Foxworth. So, inspect. There's nothing behind the barometer. Inspect. Shall we read the passenger manifest, my lord? Yes. So, passenger one for in cabin eight. Daisy Dupree, born, belongs to Mississippi, April 21st, 1882. Embark St. Louis, Debark, New Orleans. Next page, my lord. Raleigh Point Dexter Cartwright III. Born in 1854, St. Louis, New Orleans, Cabin 4. Next page. Henry Stoker, crew member, Cabin 27. So that's where we can get Henry to open the doors. Next page. Twila, Small, Twila Smallworth, embarked from St. Louis, New Park, at New Orleans, Cabin 20. Born in Carson City, Nevada, 1975. Circuit Judge Broderick Ishmael Carter embarked from Cairo, Illinois. I didn't know there's a 
place called Cairo in Illinois. Come on, in 1845, Deep Park, do all these, uh, Cabin 9. So it's good to look at all this, look at this manifest and write down which cabin, which peop, which person is, because you really need to talk to everybody, at some point at least. Willard Overbite, yes. And Gladys Thrillington, The Plains. Born in Boston, in Boston, born in Boston, Cabin 23. Reverend Alo Aloysius McMurdo Godwin. First Church of St. Argyle of the Willows, Cairo, Illinois. 1844, Cabin 12. Lionel Humphreys, born in 37, Cabin 15. Sir Charles Foxworth, born 1863, Cairo, Kentucky. Cabin 3. And with his manservant, Regis Phelps, Cabin 3. Daisy Dupree and blah blah blah. Yeah. We got we got everyone. Next page we load. Not now. So now that we know where everybody is, we can go talk to everybody. But I think I will sh I shall leave the questionings uh, for the next video. Yes, I'm gonna actually stop a recording here. As usually, I would just keep on recording until I feel like I've played enough and then split the whole thing up uh, when I feel like it. But this time, I'm actually gonna do it differently. I'm gonna stop the video when it feels uh, appropriate, like 20 minutes or so. Because uh, it's gonna be a long game, so I'm not gonna be play it all through in one go. Because that would be silly. So... I hope you enjoyed seeing the first part, where pretty much nothing happened yet, except we found the body and talked to the captain. Now we know all the passengers that are on the riverboat. And next time I'm gonna start uh, talking with the people. And uh, hopefully we get some more insight on the victim and everything else that has been going on. So I'll see you all later and I hope you have a good evening, good afternoon. And a good morning, and I'll see you all in the next part. Take care, people. Bye.